Greetings there, everyone. This is Jed Schlackman. I'm a holistic counselor and spiritual energy healer based in Miami, Florida. For this current video, I'll be speaking about the topic of metaphysical anatomy and healing trauma. I'm using that title for this because I'll be referencing a book called Metaphysical Anatomy, which is by the author Yvette Rose. And she talks about how the information in her book is there to support people for helping heal or and essentially complete and resolve their trauma process. The book is kind of an encyclopedia of mind-body associations. So looking at different body parts or anatomy as well as different health issues and the underlying spiritual and psychological causes that are likely creating those particular symptoms or issues that people experience. So near the beginning of her book, she talks about this topic of trauma and how the approach to healing that she's presenting relates to how we are able to resolve or complete processing our trauma so that we can come back toward a state of health and wholeness. So let me begin to read from the book. Here's the cover of the book for those who would like to see it. Understanding Trauma and Quote Completing Trauma. Metaphysical anatomy is a trauma-based personal development process. I believe that trauma, and this could include physical, emotional, or environmental, <clears throat> is the ultimate cause of most human problems. What makes metaphysical anatomy different than other trauma therapies is that in most cases I do not require the client to talk about or re-experience trauma in order to resolve it. In fact, a person can often resolve trauma easily through identifying its hidden benefit, known as secondary gain, without discussing the actual trauma and going into the details of it, which can often traumatize the client all over again. It is important <clears throat> to understand the significance of trauma and why unresolved trauma is significant to a person's well-being and emotional state. Trauma occurs when a person feels unsafe. Examples can include physical assault, an accident, injury, or other events, which involve a threat to a person's survival. Witnessing harm to someone else, including seeing photos or videos, can also constitute trauma. The significance of trauma lies in the fact <clears throat> that it has such a powerful role in changing lives. Your trauma can change your grandchildren's lives. For instance, childhood trauma can drastically change a person's life, influencing every aspect of their health, relationships, education, and career. The science of epigenetics demonstrates that trauma creates biological change, which can last for many generations. That means that the trauma people experience, even just witnessing it, can create physical and emotional changes to their future grandchildren and great-grandchildren. And I'll pause and interject here that in recent decades there's been a lot of empirical research and epidemiological research concerning the topic of, topic of trauma of major stresses and how they affect us in our life. There is something called the Adverse Childhood Experiences Study where they looked at the reported incidents of adverse childhood experiences and how that correlated with different features of the person's life, their job and career status, their mental health, their physical health, their relationships, and other measures. And pretty much across the board, 
the more childhood adverse experiences people had, the greater the impairments or negative effects later on in life. So this is something that's very well documented and it's clearly illustrating how vital this mind-body connection is, how our ways of coping with trauma continue to impact to us impact us in multiple ways throughout our life. So I'll come back now to metaphysical anatomy and what Yvette Rose is saying about trauma. Epigenetics is an important part of the science behind metaphysical anatomy. What matters is this. The original cause of a problem is likely to be trauma, whether in a client's early childhood or in a pre-existing trauma in the ancestry line that may have indirectly been activated by an unrelated trauma. The great thing about metaphysical anatomy is that in most cases people do not always need to know what the origin of the trauma was. I also explain how someone's state of trauma can even unconsciously serve him or her in one way or another. The trauma creates a barrier around the person and they push others away and establish boundaries with this barrier. What makes metaphysical anatomy unique is that I can acknowledge and resolve the trauma without talking about it or even knowing what it is or was. The difference between completing trauma and surviving trauma. The philosopher Frederick Nietzsche said, that which doesn't kill us makes us stronger. Many of you have heard that phrase, I'm sure. I personally do not agree with this statement, says Ms. Rose here. It depends how a person reacts to the trauma after surviving it. Trauma does not necessarily make a person stronger. It can cause a person to be less sensitive to future trauma, which unfortunately means they have successfully suppressed their past trauma. What some people perceive as being strong is actually someone's ability to dissociate, avoiding and resisting dealing with their trauma. Humans seem to lack the animal ability to complete a trauma cycle after surviving it, whether it was emotional, physical, or sexual abuse. If an antelope narrowly escapes an attack by a lion, it is probably traumatized. As soon as the antelope is safe, it goes through a process of shaking off the trauma. The shaking may resemble the physical action and movement that help the antelope to survive the threat and pending trauma, such as running, as if the animal is completing the act of survival. After a few minutes, it is as if nothing had happened. The process is called completing trauma. So after a few minutes, it has released the trauma and it runs away healthy and free from trauma. It starts grazing again as if nothing had happened. So that is what we would call completing trauma here. According to Dr. Robert C. Scare, this process of completing trauma is a way of discharging retained autonomic nervous system energy. According to Scare's research, humans lack the ability to discharge this autonomic nervous energy. The human physically survives the trauma, however never completes the trauma. The traumatic experience may be imprinted and stored in the brain. There is suppressed adrenaline in the body and the muscles are still tensed as if though the body still wants to protect itself from a possible threat. This behavior surfaces as tension and rigidity. This is why past trauma can create so many long-term symptoms in humans. When a human survives trauma, there is no release of this nervous energy. 
and the person keeps carrying that trauma for the rest of their life. According to epigenetic research, this trauma can be passed on to future generations. Trauma is a significant cause of disease which humans have trouble healing. Any successful healing tool must enable a client to complete their trauma. Unfortunately, in many modalities, the client is guided to relive the trauma. Metaphysical anatomy allows a person to not only complete trauma, but to resolve specific traumas without talking about it or reliving it in any way. In a moment of trauma, you will find a way to be and feel safe. This may include reaching out to someone for safety or taking comfort in the numbness or freeze instinct. Every time you experience a similar trauma, you may revert back to the state of mind and gut instinct that kept you safe initially. This can have a long-term effect of allowing you to dissociate from many areas in your life. Becoming numb or feeling paralyzed once served you in a positive way. However, the positive survival tactic has negative consequences. The numbness will influence every aspect of your life. Finding your survival instinct within the moment of trauma may cause you to associate your trauma with survival. You may find yourself afraid of letting go of the trauma because it may mean letting go of the survival instinct you've adopted. You must learn how to cope outside of the trauma. You will also see this in the animal kingdom. The springbok, a small antelope in South Africa, is a wonderful example. When a lion chases the springbok, it sometimes makes a miraculous escape and gets away unscathed, unharmed. The buck will go to a safe spot and start shaking and trembling for a few seconds. After that, he will just physically shake off the incident, complete the trauma and shock, and continue grazing as if nothing had happened. The springbok has completed the trauma cycle in his body and can continue his usual routine. The buck still knows that a lion is dangerous. However, the buck is not stuck in a state of trauma anymore. Humans have a different way of completing trauma. The problem starts when a person holds on to the trauma. They think that it might protect them in the future against similar incidents. People use their trauma to establish boundaries with others. By letting go of a trauma you fear, it might cause feelings of vulnerability and weakness. In addition, you might fear letting it go as you are so familiar with the abusive or challenging circumstances. Any change in the circumstances may cause you to feel unsafe and stressed. Familiarity often overpowers common logic, as you do not know how to survive in a new set of circumstances. In many cases, the original trauma that has affected a person may have occurred before their birth. It may relate to their time in the womb or at conception. People may even be expressing unresolved biological trauma from their grandparents and ancestors. The critical question is, do people need to know the origin of the trauma? The short answer is no. It is important, however, to acknowledge and understand that there is a trauma that created and triggered the original instincts. In order to complete the trauma using metaphysical anatomy, I acknowledge that there was a trauma or a family history of trauma. People open themselves up to the possibility that a survival instinct is holding a trauma in place. Dissociating from trauma instead of healing and resolving it. In healing and personal development, dissociating is a way around an obstacle, usually a trauma. Many healing modalities are based on this idea of dissociation or dissociating. For example, in psychiatry, medications such as antidepressants are often used to enable the person to move on from a significant problem or trauma. 
no one pretends that this is dealing with the underlying issue. Rather, it is giving the client some ability to move on and build their strength in order to hopefully, when they are ready, deal with the real issue. In many different personal development techniques, the client is given tools to smooth over certain traumas, reducing the stress. Often the client will be taught to bypass the trauma or stressful situations. A common personal development or healing technique is to change a voice or a singular feeling. This can make the person think or feel differently about a subject. This is an excellent example of a bypassing trauma and dissociating from it. It is generally a fast way to make the person think that they have healed. Nevertheless, all they have done is changed a thought or singular feeling. This singular feeling could actually be connected to many hundreds of similar feelings that was caused by one traumatic event. So by healing one singular feeling doesn't mean that you actually healed the core cause of it, which is often much deeper and bigger than just a feeling. It's due to womb trauma, stress in your life, epigenetics, or an actual event that triggered a predisposition, emotional state of trauma that is hidden in your genetic programming, medical condition, or negative emotional state. Imagine the voices, thoughts, or feelings as a neural highway in the brain. Changing just one aspect of this belief or feeling is exactly like building a side road on the highway. You have cleared a path around the obstacle, but you have not cleared the obstacle itself. Therefore, it is possible to try to heal trauma by working on these points, but you can never heal the actual starting point of the trauma. It's physically impossible because it's the wrong tool for the job, like building a house from paint instead of wood or bricks. The original symptoms always return. It may take years, but it will happen the next time something happens to trigger or activate the underlying unresolved trauma. The benefit of a dissociative state. Dissociating can be wonderful, and it is not our intention to criticize any therapy. The biggest benefit of bypassing trauma is that it can be created extremely quickly and can be vital in an urgent situation. It can save a person's life, especially if there is no time or ability to deal with trauma effectively. The problem with dissociating or bypassing. As the above discussion indicates, a dissociative state is rarely permanent. Strictly speaking, the dissociative state creates a new route or neural pathway around a trauma. This means that you can deal with day-to-day -day situations without feeling the symptoms. You think you have healed, however, the underlying trauma is still there. Sooner or later, something will happen to directly activate the trauma. The easiest way for this to happen is if the same thing happens again. For example, you can bypass sexual abuse trauma <clears throat> by changing some beliefs and you might feel better. Nevertheless, any form of abuse or invasion in the future will activate the old wounds and undo the dissociative state that was achieved. It should be clear from this discussion that the true goal of healing is always to truly resolve the underlying trauma or conflict. A dissociative state has its place and does help people. The problem really arises when the client, or especially the practitioner, confuses a dissociative state with a healing. Unfortunately, most therapists make this confusion every day. As a result, you may think you have moved on from a certain issue or problem. Unfortunately, you have not been warned about what will happen if an old trauma gets reactivated. The real problem is not the dissociative state, but the lack of understanding. When the old trauma is reactivated, it can lead to feeling overwhelmed by past pain. The thoughts of, haven't I already worked on this, begin to resurface. This magnifies any depression and anxiety 
and in rare cases can lead to suicidal thoughts simply because you feel the healing doesn't work when in fact you acquired a dissociative state. Survival Instincts Survival instincts are behavior patterns that keep people alive. What makes an instinct become a survival instinct is that it directly and immediately leads to a person's survival. Survival instincts are also called animal instincts because they relate to base animal responses, something that all animals, or at least all vertebrates, share. The most basic of brain function in, say, a fish would make the connection between the survival instinct and the act of survival and reaching safety. For this to occur, the survival must be immediate. The best known example is the fight or flight, freezing, numbness, and hiding responses. Dissociating from trauma. This is a very common pattern for most people. When you experience a trauma that was unpleasant, painful, or disgusting, you often dissociate from it. This may create a sensation as if the trauma never happened or that it no longer affects you. The trauma is suppressed, leaving confusion and debilitating symptoms behind. I notice that clients will often say that they see themselves in a still picture at the time of the trauma or injury. That is because they have dissociated from the incident. They've shifted their awareness elsewhere in an attempt to escape the reality. Other clients will describe incidents that were unpleasant as if they were seeing the entire story unfold on a TV screen. It can range from having vague flashbacks or complete amnesia of past incidents, which is also known as dissociating. Most people dissociate when they experience stress, vulnerability, and horror and are unable to escape their circumstances. The more you have dissociated from reality, the harder it is to get in touch with your emotions and to know who you truly are. It is possible to never fully understand reality if you spend the majority of your life trying to avoid and dissociate from past trauma and present life. When an unresolved trauma comes up during a session, you may have signs of selective hearing. Selective hearing is when you can't hear everything that a practitioner is saying. Instead, you find yourself focusing on hearing only selective words in an attempt to avoid hearing the truth. You may begin to feel numb, experience blurred vision, and feel restless. You may even physically twitch, finding yourself unable to sit comfortably even getting agitated or aggressive toward the practitioner. When a trauma is unresolved, it means that you have suppressed an incident that was traumatic and significant. When a person suppresses a trauma, <clears throat> it will surface in different ways until they have completed the trauma cycle. Once the trauma cycle is complete, the memory of the trauma becomes like a foreign distant memory. So I'd like to comment on a few of these issues that have been brought up here in metaphysical anatomy. One is the topic of epigenetics and carrying the memory of ancestral trauma. The ancestral trauma is something that a person normally wouldn't be able to consciously remember. However, in some altered states of consciousness, they might be able to access memories of their ancestors. So I've seen this happen in meditative states and under hypnosis where a person can access memories from other lifetimes. That includes ancestral lifetimes as well as lifetimes that are perhaps other incarnations or streams from their own soul. So other incarnations of that person's soul could also be affecting what's happening in their present life. So traumas from those other incarnations may also be brought up or re-experienced, may also be arising for the purpose 
of completion, completing that cycle that metaphysical anatomy is discussing. Now, the author in the book says that in a basic sense, you don't have to relive the memory or experience of the trauma in order to complete the cycle or release it. And that's something I would only partially agree with. We have different levels to our being. We have our physical body. We have different layers to our energy. We have our emotions. We have our thoughts and our belief systems. So often the trauma is kind of stuck on a physical level. So we haven't released that nervous system energy that's still looking for an expression or outlet. So if we're able to energetically and physiologically release that trauma energy, then we can, in that sense, complete the cycle. However, often the trauma experience is connected to particular beliefs or ideas, ways of thinking about life and reality that actually, in a sense, cause that experience to be traumatic for the person. The person didn't have an understanding of themselves and their existence that at that time enabled or facilitated handling that situation or circumstance. And that's in a sense why it was so overwhelming or traumatic. So if we look at life as a learning process, as a way to give us opportunities to expand our perspective or our understanding of things, then we may need to go back to that particular memory or experience to understand how we had a particular limited or distorted belief that was part of the process of creating the trauma in the first place in order that we can shift that belief. So we kind of need to work on multiple levels here. We want to release that nervous system energy. So we may, may need to allow our body to let go of that tension, to perhaps shake or twitch, to breathe and let go of whatever pressure we're holding within us. But we also may need to understand things more to be able to review and reflect upon our own beliefs and how those beliefs are actually part of what creates our life experience. So if we don't want to repeat certain patterns, we want to be able to shift our fundamental or core belief systems. So being able to actually review or relive a particular memory is often a vital way to access whatever belief system needs to be shifted or transformed. We do need suitable resources to help us go through that process so that when we do review or revisit the memory, we don't remain stuck in it again, that we are able to this time complete that process to fully let go of whatever energetic or physical tension was created to release the emotions that may have been built up and to resolve the disturbances or distortions in our belief systems. So there are certainly cases where I think it would be beneficial or vital to actually go back to the memory, but to do it this time in a way that does allow you to complete it, to release it, to end that cycle and to no longer have a traumatic association with that experience where it is something that you could reflect on and it's kind of neutral. You won't carry a strong feeling toward that memory anymore. And since you no longer carry that emotional imprint or cord connecting you to that memory, 
it does seem like something more vague or distant. Your own consciousness doesn't need you to bring it up anymore since it has been resolved. So those are some of the key points I'd like to bring up or add to this discussion. I do encourage anyone who's looking for healing with any issues in their life, whether it's psychological issues such as grief, anxiety, depression, fears and phobias, addictions, or any physical health issues, and this includes really any physical health concern since your physical body is not separate from your field of consciousness, that by going into the subconscious mind and into the energy patterns that are present in your body, you can get to the root or cause of those issues and foster more complete or permanent healing for whatever your concerns may be. Yvette Rose talks about completion with trauma and there's another author who you may want to check out who has based her work in part on her studies of metaphysical anatomy and other aspects of healing and that's the author Teal Swan who's developed her own completion process to help people heal from various issues in their lives. For those that are interested in holistic health, spirituality, and personal development, I invite you to view my website, which is phinsights.com. That's P-H-I-N-S-I-G-H-T-S dot C-O-M. You can learn about different group events and workshops that I facilitate, as well as the private individual healing sessions that I offer. For now, I'd like to wish each of you a wonderful day. Namaste.